This demonstration shows how the Juniper SRX firewall can identify LockBit 3.0 ransomware and isolate an infected host in the context of ransomware attack. In 2022, the LockBit ransomware gang was among the most prevalent ransomware to strike businesses. They were responsible for high-profile cyber attacks, including the government organizations. On September 21st, 2022, someone on Twitter claimed that they were able to hack LockBit servers and get a hold of the builder. A public spokesperson of LockBit Gang, though, disputed the hack. Instead, a disgruntled developer leaked the private ransomware builder. The LockBit 3.0 operation began in June 2022 and is still infecting businesses as to date. We'll demonstrate how this attack operates and encrypts files. We will create the ransomware using the builder and host it on an HTTP server. PowerShell will then be used to launch the attack on a Windows client. The compromised builder consists of builder.exe and the configuration file that may be edited to define various parameters such as encryption mode, the processes, the services to stop, and the files and directories not to encrypt. When you click on build.bat, the ransomware files lb3.exe and lb3pass.exe will be created in the build folder. There is also the decryptor. A password is necessary for the lb3pass.exe to infect the system. They use this as one method of evading sandboxes. In the next section, we'll infect the Windows computer. Some documents can be seen on the desktop to show that LockBit encrypt these files. Wireshark is launched in order to monitor the HTTP downloads. Using PowerShell and the command prompt, we launch the attack. As you can see, it downloads lb3.exe and lbb.txt, the PowerShell script. The files on the desktop are now encrypted after a little delay. The encrypted file icons were also modified by the ransomware. You can see that the files are rather heavily encrypted if you open them in a text editor. They also included a ransom note readme.txt that contains instructions on how to get in touch with the ransomware operator to have your files decrypted. In the following, we will simulate the attack with the SRX involved to show how the SRX firewall will be able to detect this attack. The following diagram shows you the components used in this demonstration. An SRX client is involved. Attached to it are several Windows hosts, an Ubuntu machine is also attached to it, which will act as the malware server. A security director, Juno Space, is also included, which will be used to manage our SRX and policies. We will use the Windows client PC1 to launch the attack. From our jump station, we log into the security director, which we will use to manage our SRX and our policies. We will go to Configure, Threat Prevention, and then the policies. As you can see, it's configured to block infected hosts at threat level 8 to 10. For HTTP downloads, it is configured to block at a threat score level 7 to 10. Using RDP, we're connecting to one of the Windows clients that we're going to infect. Before we begin, we want to make sure that this client has internet connectivity. Next, using the command line, we execute the attack. 
In the background, you can see Wireshark and the files being downloaded from the HTTP server. If we go back to Security Director, we can see that it has detected the ransomware lb3.exe and lb3 underscore pass.exe. We can click on the file to see more details about this specific download. Under the behavioral analysis, we can see the behaviors that have been seen. It is important to note that this malware was detected proactively using the machine learning model engine. If we look at the host, it was scored at threat level 9 and it shows that this was because of a downloaded malicious file. Since our SRX is configured to block host at threat level 8 through 10, it will disconnect this host from the network. Since this host is disconnected from the network, we're not able to ping to this machine or connect to it via RDP. Once the machine is cleaned and is no longer infected, we can go back to Security Director to get this machine back on the network. In order to do this, we change the investigation status back to resolved and fixed, which will put the machine back on the network. As you can see, we can once again ping the machine and connect to it. The Windows client is now connected back to the network and has internet connectivity once again.